This short demo will show you how to migrate a basic Lotus Notes database application to SharePoint 2010. Here we have a Lotus Notes database. Notice that we have views and we have documents. And I can open up a document and see a form containing the fields that I care about. What you may not know is this database can also be expressed over the web. So if I go to a web browser, I can see the same database by just simply putting into a browser the name of the server, the name of the database, the name of the view that I want to see, and then question mark open view. So this now gives me the same data, and again I can click on a document and I can see a representation of that document in the browser. So if I change this open view command to read view entries, and this is a built-in command then on your Domino server, I now actually get an XML stream of the same data, or my document with our values in it. Um, this is a subset of the data because paging is built in, so I need to actually tell the Domino server that I don't just want one page worth, I actually want all the data. So I can do that by adding the parameter ampersand count equals minus one. I now will give all the values in this database up to what the server default setting is. The server has a maximum setting of a thousand documents. Um, I've changed mine to 10,000. You can change yours to whatever. So now I have actually displayed here data for um, lots and lots and lots and lots of documents. Okay, so how can we use this XML stream that contains the data in the database? Well, I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to go to uh, Microsoft Access 2010. So here I have Access 2010. I opened up a blank database of nothing in there but the default table, which is empty. And I'm going to use the features of Access to extract the data from uh, Domino Designer and then export them up to SharePoint. So the first thing I want to do is go to External Data and then XML File. That's my import option. And here I'm going to put in my XML source, which is our Domino database. When I say OK, uh, Access is going to call that URL, read in that XML stream, and display some options for me. Now remember, there's actually over 2,000 documents in this sample database that you can try yourself, and it will take a couple seconds for it to display. Now there we have the data, but unfortunately it's just showing me that there's a list of numbers and some entry data, which is not the fields that I'm looking for. So what I need to do is transform this, and all this transform does is move the fields into the right places so that it can be read by lots of applications. You can find that transform posted up on the web. I'll add the link in here. And uh, what it does is change my view such that I can now see all the fields. So notice now I have all the fields I care about. I'm going to bring in the structure and the data. And I have the option here of saving these steps in case I want to automate that. And what has happened is we've actually created a new view here with all our data. We're now in a relational store and I can do nice things like reporting or I can add data types to my fields and so on, uh, find bad data. Um, we can do that if you want, but what we're going to do is go right to the external data, export, and under the more options I have the point of saying SharePoint lists. And here I'm going to call this list video 3. Now what I've done is I've told Access that I want to uh, not only move this data, but I have to actually create a new list for me up in SharePoint. So Access is going to call the web service APIs found in SharePoint and it's going to define the schema for a list. And once that list has been created, it's then going to up upload all the data for that list. And remember, there's, uh, again, 2,000 or so documents. Once this is complete, we're actually going to be presented with the list. We're going to be looking at a default view of the list inside of SharePoint. And there will actually have been created for us an InfoPath form for displaying or editing each one of those uh, documents. 
So when it opens up, I'm going to actually edit the view a little bit so it looks a little nicer, and then show you some of the features. And okay, so here we have our brand new list and all our data in there, and there is quite a bit of data in here. I'm going to modify the view. So as we edit this view, I'm just going to do a couple small things. One, I'm going to add the created by column, and I'm going to add the edit, edit link. I'm going to move that to the first position. Say OK. And if we look at the standard view, we now have my name listed here as the created by and my awareness and all those nice things. I also have an edit icon. I can click on that and now I see an info path form. This info path form I did not create. It was created for me by the process. I can go in here and I can edit my data. I even get a spell checker built in for me. Now I don't have any data validation that's been lost in this process. I don't have any audit trail of who created this document because you saw before it was created by me and there's no logic so I'd have to go back and add those kind of things but I would argue that most you NoSe know, databases have very limited sort of um, audit trails and data validation and it'd be very simple to kind of go in and add those things. So this process is probably good enough for many of your basic notes applications and it's a really good way to sort of learn and get started using SharePoint and, and using your old Lotus Notes applications as a jumping off point or a way to learn from. So I hope you learned a lot. Thank you very much.